This is a Tina CMS demo site, and it's built with Next.js, but it could be using any framework. There's a home page and a blog page and two blog posts. All of the content for the site is stored in the file system. Tina supports most file types, but this site mostly uses Markdown, MDX, and YAML files. And I'm gonna show you what the content looks like behind this page. You can see there's a title, some other metadata, and that's followed by the blog post body, which is just Markdown. This is an MDX file, which is just a flavor of Markdown. To edit the site in Tina CMS, I'm just going to open it in a new tab and go to slash admin. And right away we see we're working in local mode. And that just means Tina's interacting with the local file system. If this were deployed to production or staging, Tina could save changes to GitHub. And we've configured some items in the sidebar here. And let's just click in and find our blog post. Okay, here it is. Let's change it to vote for Napoleon. We'll give it an image. This site is using images stored in the uploads directory, but Tina also supports third-party services like Cloudinary and S3. We'll change the author, which is just a reference to another markdown file. And let's edit the blog post body. We'll just change this title. So, hello world. Okay. I set up a few custom components for this page, and you just drop them in like this. This component is JSX because we're using MDX, but each framework has its own format, like Hugo has uh, Hugo shark codes, for example. Okay. Let's click save and see what our page looks like. Okay, there's a new image and a new title. Looks pretty good. Great. And same with our markdown file, vote for Napoleon. Yep, where there's the hero image, there's the MDX component. Okay, so editing something like the home page is gonna be a little bit different because the home page doesn't use a markdown file. It stores data in YAML and it's built using these reusable components. So we're looking at this hero component right here and we're gonna add another one. We'll go to the home page. You can see that was the hero block we were just looking at. But let's add a new one. We've got four set up here. And we'll just embed this testimonial block. Click into it. Pretty happy with the content. It looks good. This is all configurable. You model out the data for these in your schema. And we'll click save. Okay, so here's the testimonial below the hero block. And let's go find that YAML file, home.yaml. Okay, so here's the blocks array. We've got um, the first object is the hero object, and the second one is uh, the testimonial. Looks good. So the benefits of using Markdown and version control for your content are huge. But one of Tina's most powerful features is visual editing. I'll show you, show you what that looks like. We're gonna open up our config file for Tina. And uh, I'm gonna uncomment some stuff I have in here. I've, I configured this earlier, so we should be good to go. When I go to the CMS and refresh, you'll see a live preview of our site on the right and the CMS on the left. So now my content editors can get the context while editing a piece of content. So welcome to our site. Um, and what we're finding is that content teams are becoming super productive with visual editing. Okay, so that's Tina in a nutshell. I hope you like what you saw and I hope you get a chance to test it out yourself.